contenders. From the USA, Dave Waddington, one of America's top-line powerlifters. From the Netherlands, Arm Wolders, who's currently Holland's strongest man. From Kenya, Piazza Ching, one of his country's best ever Olympic lifters. From Iceland, the showman John Paul Sigmundson, last year's runner-up. Canada's representative is Daniel Pula, arm wrestler and professional stronger. West Germany competing in the massive shape of champion lifter Rudolf Kuska. From Sweden and on home ground, jazz-loving powerlifter Ingvar Gustafsson. And from Britain, the man they'll all have to beat, Jeff Capes, currently the world's strongest man. And we, like the competitors, have travelled to a wintry Sweden and a place called Mora. Around the year holiday resort in the Sicilian region, 150 snowy miles northeast of Stockholm. Every year, Mora is the destination for skiers, hikers, and climbers from all over Europe. It's famous for hosting the Vassalon, the international cross country ski race. In 1985, Mora is a busy modern place, but it still retains many attractive features from the past. Like this handsome steam engine, once the main link to the outside world. The whole area is dominated by Lake Sillian, created when a meteorite struck the region 300 million years ago, which, like the rest of Mora, is frozen over right now. And the first event for the Daft Trucks Trophy is, quite naturally, the truck pull. Two eight-ton trucks there, so the strongmen will be competing in pairs. They'll be pulling these trucks along 30 metres of icy, snowy ground. The conditions are very, very cold. It's minus 10 degrees centigrade at the moment. We've already cleared away inches of snow from the track, but I don't think conditions have ever been quite so tough for a pulling event. And first away, it's John Paul Sigmundson, the blonde giant from Iceland, and he's taking on this man, Daniel Pula, a bulldozer driver from Quebec. Yeah. It's going to be hard getting a grip on this snowy ground with eight tons of truck to pull, but John Paul is getting off now to a very quick start. But Daniel Pula just can't get going. Maybe he can do with his bulldozer to help right now, but yes, I think he is moving now as the wheels are turning. Sigmundson steaming ahead, though. He's setting a cracking challenge to the rest of the strongmen. And that's the time to beat 33 seconds. John Paul, very happy about this. An amazing time, considering the very difficult conditions. Were you slipping a lot? Yes. Um, my last few meters, I was slipping a lot. I suppose with coming from Iceland, you're, you're, this sort of condition is much better for you than for most of the other competitors. Yes, but in Iceland now we have the best weather in Europe, so... Pula is still towing that truck home, taking a time of 1 minute and 20 seconds. Daniel is not pleased about that. He's come from Quebec for this contest. He's a new boy in this big league, and he desperately wants to do well. On now to heat two. The lanes, by the way, are chosen at the toss of a coin. On the left, it's Jeff Capes, and on the right, the American Dave Waddington. Both men really struggling to get a start there. Dave Waddington sliding all over the place. Capes is underway, though. Big Jeff loves this type of event. He always does well in them. Waddington's truck might seem to be hard to get going, but in fact, the vehicles are identical. They've been checked by experts, and Waddington now has got the thing moving. Jeff Capes steaming ahead, yet he's going slower than Sigmundson. The current world champion could be beaten at his best event. 38 seconds, that's five seconds slower than Sigmundson. What an upset, right at the start for Jeff Capes. And here's Dave Waddington coming up to the finishing line after 30 punishing slippery meters. 58 seconds for Waddington after that bad start, and the contest certainly hasn't started too well for Jeff Capes either. 38 seconds, Jeff. Very poor. Five seconds slower than John Paul. Yeah, that's one of those things. Why do you reckon you were so slow? I don't really know. I'm dumbfounded. Still, there's always a time to get beat. And uh, he's done it in the best, uh, best event, huh? Very strange. Well, not everybody is too worried about Jeff's performance as we move on to heat three of the truck tow. 
And it's Pius Ching from Kenya, the shortest and lightest man, taking on the local hero, Ingvar Gustafsson, a security guard from Stockholm. Now remember, each of these trucks weighs eight tons and hard-packed snow is a surface that's never been used before in this competition. But Kaiser Ching is getting a good foothold now. She's only five and a half feet tall and 15 and a half stone. That's pretty small by strongman standards. He's 25, he lives in Nairobi, and he's Kenya's outstanding Olympic-style powerlifter. Well, Ingvar Gustafsson used to be a sprinter at school, and now he's trying to sprint and pull a truck at the same time. He's doing well, though, but he's a much slower man than a Ching. Pius got into a good towing action there, almost strolling to the finishing line, and he gets there in 47 seconds, I make it. And Ingvar Gustafsson marches in. This time, one minute and 16 seconds. Did you find it very difficult with the snow and the ice? Oh, yeah, I'm freezing, and I... All what I, I want to do is put as much pressure as I can wherever it's possible. Are you at all used to, uh, to these sort of conditions for athletics? Not really. This is my first time to, to experience such weather. Now the fourth and final heat, and it's Arb Wolders of Holland, a great all-rounder among strongmen, against the rising star Rudolf Kuster from West Germany. Ready? This is a tussle between two of the biggest, the most evenly matched men in the championship. Our Wilders keeping low, he's got a good technique there, getting off to a great start. In fact, this heat is between the two men who came equal second in the contest to find Europe's strongest man in Holland a few months ago. Pista finding it hard to get going, but Ab Wilders powering his way to the line to finish in 35 seconds. So that puts him into second place. Jeff Cates drops down to third. A great effort by Wolders. And Rudy Kuster, the postal worker from Kassel in Germany, hits the line after 55 seconds. As Arb gets checked by his coach and Rudy gets up from the snow, here's Jeff Cates pondering his performance. 38 seconds to me is an eternity. And uh, it's very strange to, to go so slow. And, um, but the timekeepers assure me that the clocks were correct. Um, I thought they'd probably frozen up, but uh, they, said, <laughs> they said it was right. So they're the judges, and uh, the result obviously stands. First Sigmundson, second Walders, um, at this moment third me, and uh, then the Keenan in fourth place. So uh, already the competition is open, and where people like myself thought they'd do very well in their uh, um, best event, I'm in third position. So uh, already the, the tables are topsy-turvy after the first event. Well, I hope that lone skier there and all the other people up on the slopes have been warned to stay well clear now because the strongmen are about to start throwing their weight around. This is a land of pine forests, so there's been no difficulty at all in finding the vital ingredient for the next event, a caber. Tossing the caber is as traditional a sport in the Northlands of Sweden as it is in the highlands of Scotland. And this particular caber, well, it weighs about uh, 36 kilos, that's about 80 pounds. It's about five meters long and the strong men have to throw it as far as they can. Well, here's the course, cleared and flattened and marked out, and let's catch up on the highlights of what's been happening. Daniel Pula has never done this event before. His best throw was eight and a quarter meters, just over 27 feet. Another newcomer, Pius Ching, managed just over 22 feet, 6.73 meters. Here's Ingvar Gustafsson to throw. And he fails because the caber must somersault end over end. Rudy Kuster did better than most of the newcomers to timber throwing. He did 10.5 metres, 34 and a half feet. And the caber getting a bit of attention, a bit of de-icing there. And we join the action with Dave Waddington to throw. And so far, his best was 15.18 metres. That's nearly 50 feet. And Dave, incidentally, came third in the World's Strongest Man contest in 1981. It's a good one. It somersaulted right over, sliding along the snow. It's just a couple of inches short of his best throw. And now it's the last throw for Jeff Capes, vastly experienced in this event, a star of many a Highland Games. And it must be his best yet here at Mora. 16 metres 75, but Jeff seems a little anxious. I don't think he's too pleased about the way things are going for him. 
Arb Wolders gets help from the two officials who are there to position the caber for the strongmen. Arb openly admits that this is not his favourite event. His best throw here so far, 40 feet. The snow, as you can see, is falling heavily now. That's not helping, and it's still bitterly cold. And it's on its end, and it's over. Arb will be happier about that one. 13 metres 50, that's 44 and a quarter feet. But he seems to have hurt his hand. Not too badly, though. As Sigmundson gets ready for his final throw, how does Jeff rate him in this event? John was up in Scotland last year, and uh, unfortunately, we taught him how to toss the caber, and he's becoming more efficient all the time. And in fact, he's very good. Again, I think, I think, uh, you know, he's, he's the sort of guy who will go on and on and keep learning and learning and learning until he's unbeatable. Well, let's see if he's unbeatable now. He's already thrown 60 metres, 65, 54 and a half feet. Can the pupil beat the master? And that's a tremendous throw. They'll be proud of him in Scotland. With his second throw, Sigmundson sets a new world record. 17 metres, 29 centimetres. So, a new world record for John Paul, 56 feet, 9 inches, and that gives him 8 points. One more than his Highland Games mentor, Jeff Capes. Dave Waddington, who says he's still getting over jet lag, picks up 6 useful points there, but it's the Icelanders' event. Well, congratulations, John Paul, on breaking a new world record. Thank you. Do you normally uh, throw the caber? No, I don't. I did last summer in Scotland, but not for distance. Just turn over 10 o'clock. For the accuracy of the task, really. Yeah. And have you done a lot of training for this championship? I'm always training a lot. Always. Not especially for world's strongest man. Just for myself. And how important is it to you to, to win this competition? Uh, I want to be the king of the competition. Always. Well, he is the king so far. Two wins in a row with a maximum 16 points. And the present title holder, Jeff Capes, is already three points behind. Watch out, though, for that trio of Wolders, Waddington and Cooster. They won't let Sigmundson or Capes get away with anything. Well, in this place, it's Christmas every day of the year, even when the sun is here in the summertime, because they've just built a place called Tomtyland, which means Santa Land, and it's now the new official home of Father Christmas. And his reindeers are here as well, kept in a special pen behind Santa's house. This picturesque building is Santa's toy factory, where all kinds of gifts connected with the famous man are on show. And we're going inside that factory now for our next event. We've taken over the workshop for a while and some of Santa's staff are watching. But no way could this lineup be regarded as Santa's little helpers. Well, this log fire has been helping to warm us all up after the Arctic conditions outside, but our strongmen have got another way of hotting up as well. It's the rock lift, and it's a pure test of brute strength. And what makes this extra difficult is the rocks are any old shape, and they're awkward to handle. So what's Jeff's technique? I, th I, th I just think you've just got to get it up there and pray, basically, because the... I mean, people might say, well, I can press a uh, 300-pound on a bar, but the bars don't come into it at all because it's a small piece of uh, rock. You have a, a very narrow push position. You're not getting a bar, which is I ideal. You've got a bar and you can use your own grip and push easily. But this is uh, a very um, strongman event. And here's the would-be king of the strongmen, John Paul Sigmundson, the young pretender, making a bid for Capes' crown. In round three, this is what's been happening. Wolders, Sigmundson and Capes have all lifted 100 kilos. Oh, Ching has failed, and the only man still left to attempt this weight is Rudy Kuster. 100 kilos, Rudy Kuster. <laughs> Rudy's currently fifth overall, so he really needs to build up some points now. Well, apart from heaving rocks around, uh, Rudy's other interests include microelectronics and computers. In fact, he's taught himself the basics of several languages on a computer the size of a wristwatch. He's got it onto his chest. Now, can he lock those arms out above his head? Oh, 
No, that 100 kilo rock was just too much for Eddie Feaster. He was second in the European powerlifting competition a little while ago, but uh, these jagged and unbalanced lumps of local stone have beaten him. It was a brave and a very painful effort, though. The doctor just checking, Rudy. I don't think it's serious, just a nasty graze. So, as a new and heavier rock is manhandled onto the rostrum, it takes two lesser mortals. There are only three left, Wolders, Sigmerson and Capes. Jeff doesn't like to be trailing in any kind of competition, let alone in one where last time he was on top. Psyching himself up for the big lift, preparing his body to take on this huge chunk of rock. And now he's got to get that boulder up above his head. He rests it for a while, letting the cranium take the strain in. quite locked out. No, they weren't, so Arb goes out. But he's achieved third place and six very useful points. And now John Paul Sigmund. John Paul calling on the Nordic gods for a bit of help. And like Arb, he's also using the head technique. Yes, it's a good lift for this 25-year-old Icelander. And he acknowledges the cheers of his family. So, as the weight goes up to 115 pounds, there's just John Paul and Jeff Cates to back it out. seems to be thoroughly enjoying this event as well. But can he stay with capes? Absolute concentration as he prepares for that lockout up above. Yes, he's done it. And it's body beautiful time. So the pair are still dead, not with only two rocks left. It's time for tactics. What's Jess plan? What weight next? Um, well, I think uh, um, it's a gamble, basically, um, because there's only two of us left, and the points difference is one. So uh, I, I'm going to try the 130. Obviously, um, I don't know whether it's, it's possible, but obviously I'm going to try. And John's opted for 125. Is that not a bit of a risk, 130? You might damage yourself. Everything's a risk. The whole competition's a risk. Not um, physically, but um, taking chances where chances occur. 125 kilos, John Paul Sigmerson. So John Paul playing it safe, trying for the 125.
now taking a big chance. He's turned down the 125 rough and he's going straight for the 130. If he lifts this, it'll be a tremendous psychological victory over Sigmarsson. If he fails, John Paul wins the event. Indicates that's enough. The gamble wouldn't pay off, and for Sigmundson, the might get banter from Rekovic with three wins in a row. <laughs> so, Jeff Capes having to be satisfied once again to come second to Sigmundson. Our world is still looking very much in contention with six points and little Pius Ching and Rudy Kuster sharing fourth position. But it's maximum points for the Icelander. In the last two years of these competitions, you've really sort of grown in size and stature, haven't you? Have you done a lot of effort to build your body up? Yes. I've been training uh, many sports, like karate, and where I have some spirit, you know. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a boxer or the strongest man in the world. Do you think you're going to be the strongest man in the world? Uh, maybe I can be the strongest man of this competition. Maybe, but not if Capes and the rest of the lads can stop him. Here's the overall scoreboard after three events, and Sigmarsson has almost twice as many points as Kuster, who's lying fourth. Gustafsson and Pula are getting left behind. Well, we've come outside again now into the cold and the snow and the dark for an event which features the famous Dala wooden horses of this particular region of Sweden, the Sillian region. They've been carved by local people here for more than 100 years now. They're very distinctive in their looks and they've become one of the national symbols of Sweden. And the particular horse that the strongmen are going uh, to lift now is this one. It weighs 25 kilos, that's about uh, 56 pounds. And if you think that's not very heavy, it's about the same weight as this young lady here, 10-year-old Sora Bood, who lives in this part of Sweden, and she weighs about four stone. So imagine holding four stone out in front of you. There is one compensation, though, for the strong men. Whoever holds this up for the longest gets to keep it as a gift from the local people. Some of the locals are braving temperatures of minus 16 to watch this event, though not all of them can keep their eyes open. As we join the contest, it's the turn of the local man, Ingvar Gustafsson. Quite an entrance. Well, the rule is obvious event, a very simple. His shoulders and backside must stay up against the post, and his arms must stay at 90 degrees. And the clock goes on as the pain starts building up all around his arms and his shoulders and down his back. And no more, says Ingvar. 26 seconds is his time. The horse gets a friendly pass, but I don't think he'll be taking it home. And now Jeff Capes takes that position. He damaged a muscle in his right shoulder some years ago, so he doesn't look forward at all to this event, but he needs the points to catch Sigmarsson. And already the weight of that horse is beginning to tell, and that's the time he has to beat. No, it's gone. And that obviously hurt Jeff, but uh, he didn't expect to do well. Now the turn of Holland's strongest man, Arv Wolders, who has performed so well in this event in previous contests. He must be a favourite tonight. Arv's a really determined man and he's trained very, very hard for this contest. And this is a good time indeed. He's already 10 seconds ahead of Gustafsson, and his cool iron will Dutchman keeps on going, battling against the pain. And that's the best time yet, 46 seconds for Arv Wolders, and it's going to take something very special to stop that horse from going to Holland. Only two more to go, and here's Rudy Kuster from West Germany. Now, Rudy wasn't at all happy in this event during the European competition, so let's see what happens tonight. Oh, 
46 seconds to beat and he's looking very determined and very powerful. And that's it, 34 seconds, a creditable time, but not a winning one. Now to the last man who also happens to be an overall lead so far in this world championship, John Paul Sigmundson. Can he make it four wins in a row? He came here to win, he says, but will he be able to beat Arb this time of 46 seconds? He's already beaten Custer's time. But he's six seconds short of Wolders, making it Sigmundson's worst result so far, a mere second place. Ahead of him was uh, Wolders with that remarkable 46-second hold. Kuster did better than expected, picking up six valuable points, but a bad result for Jeff Capes. Down there in the bottom half of the table, only three points. This was Wolders' triumph. Ab, you must be very pleased at the end of the first day, your first win. Yes, I needed it for my confidence, and I knew I was good in this event. And they told us that if I won, the winner could take the horse home. And I uh, won to take the horse. What are you going to do with it? I give it to my son. I got a son of eight, and uh, he would be pleased with it. And you're pleased as well because you've knocked Jeff Capes into third place. Yeah, and I, and, and I took some points off uh, John Paul Sigmundson. And that's, on this moment, number one. So you always have to look at one number one. But he will come tomorrow. So you're looking forward to tomorrow? Uh, yes. That should be my day. But today has unquestionably okay. belonged to Sigmundson. Three wins and a second place put him five points ahead of Ab Wolders, who's looking more threatening with every event. And it's really these two who are standing between Jeff Gates and his title. Well, the new music has charged to suit Swedish hospitality, the mayors and local dignitaries of the five communes of the Mora area are giving a party in honour of the competitors. Oh. And in this most convivial atmosphere, we can see the other side of the strongman. There's plenty of good humour and rapport amongst these giants, and they've got no trouble in lifting the language barrier. I'm here for the Syrian group representing the towns around the Lake Sillian and the Syria Mora. I would like to wish you all very welcome to our part of the world. And the world of the Mayor of Mora is covered in snow for almost half the year. Skiers come here from all over Scandinavia and it's getting increasingly popular with ski fans from many other parts of Europe as well. It's a wild and windswept place of great beauty, vast expanses of white hillsides and snow-dusted forests. In the whole of the Sillian region of central Sweden, there are only 20,000 people, so that's lots of room to spare, and those numbers are, of course, boosted by the thousands of visiting holidaymakers. When the snow melts, there's hiking and fishing and boating, and the area has thriving industries based on all the surrounding natural resources. Among the specialities of the Sillian area is this very fine glassware, famous for its use of colour and its dramatic designs. Much use is made of local timber for many of the buildings, and there's tradition everywhere you look, in the architecture and in the very atmosphere of the place. Perhaps it's the remoteness of these five communes around the Sillian lake that make the place so appealing. But the quietness of this snowbound lakeland has been interrupted temporarily by the arrival of some of the world's strongest men, about to start day two of their contest. Well, John Paul, yesterday was a great day for you. How do you feel this morning? I'm feeling fine. A little bit stiff in the legs, but OK. Did you sleep well? Yes, but I didn't sleep until 2 o'clock in the night. You know, I tried to sleep. I tried and tried, but I was always doing the event when I was... Were you still worrying about the events, were you? Thinking about uh, yeah. how you'd done to yesterday? Yes, and... yes. Jeff Cape starting day two, needing a big comeback if he's to keep his world title. <laughs> it's a good day yesterday, huh? How do you feel this morning? Good. I have a few hours sleep and I've not injured myself. 
I only had a Kirk Douglas cheer now from the rock lifting, <laughs> but it went all right, so I feel fine. And uh, what about the prospects for today? There are a few quick exercises over long distance, and because I'm one of the lightest of the boys, and I've trained on that event, I should do well. Well, it's even colder today. It's minus 15 degrees centigrade at the moment. And to show you just how cold it is, that fountain there was frozen as the water fell. And I'm standing at the moment in the middle of a frozen lake. And this is going to be the setting for our next event, which should be one of the fastest ever by strongman standards. It's the sleigh push. The course is 80 meters long. Each sleigh has two passengers and ballast to make up a total of 400 kilos. In heat one, the lineup is nearest the camera O Ching, then Gustafsson, Quister, and Wolders. Ready? There are two heats, so it's the winners and the two fastest losers who qualify for the final. And it's Kuster on the left and Ab Wolders who are setting the pace. And Wolders is really going, he's pulling ahead. And he finishes first with Krista second, Gustafsson third, and Piazza Chin coming in way behind him fourth. Well, Arb Wolders training for this event really paying dividends. His ever-present coach there, putting his jacket back on. Two of the sledge passengers are keeping warm by dancing their way back to the start. And some of the younger spectators making friends there with a familiar local character. Heat two, and the lineup is Sigmundson, there is the camera, Poulin from Canada, Waddington from America, and on the far side, Jeff Capes. And this is Jeff's eye view of the course. Ready! Go, oh, yes! Oh, and Poulin's made a very slow start there. Capes is just leading on the right from Waddington. But John Port is catching them first. Capes is winning. Who will be second? And I think John Port just picked Dave Waddington. And as we see it again, watch out for Sigmundson as he literally throws the sledge at the finishing line and he beats Waddington by a reindeer's whisker. Confirmation on the board then, so remember it's the two heat winners and the two fastest losers overall who qualify for the final. So that means that Wolders, Capes, Sigmundson and Waddington will be there. And Jeff Capes desperately needs a win to lift his morale. So this is how they're lining up for the final. Nearest the camera, Wolders, then Capes, Sigmundson, and Waddington. Ready? And already Capes and Sigmundson pulling ahead. Oh, Jeff oh, slightly Jeff. in front there, but it's very, very oh, close. Jeff. Oh, Jeff. Oh, Jeff. And there's a triumph for Jeff Capes, the heaviest man in the contest and also the fastest. Sigmundson second, Wolders third, and Waddington fourth. Well, this has been a spectacular new event in this contest to find the world's strongest man. And there's Dave Waddington getting treatment from the doctor. It must be due to gulping in this bitterly cold air so quickly into his lungs. Jeff Capes also having difficulty in breathing after the demanding race. But for the first time here in Sweden, he's won something. An amazing time of 16.9 seconds gives Capes eight points. Sigmundsson comes second again. And there's consolation for the last four because they only had to run once. Jeff's the winner, but he's having to pay the price. How's that you're going to die? Yeah. Can, you, can you describe how you feel? Pain. <laughs> Total commitment. <sighs> A lot of pain. It's all round the body, is it? I think it's the breathing. It's so cold. You can't take in the correct amount of air without burning your chest. So cold. But in spite of the conditions, that win will have cheered Jeff up considerably. And it's also put him back into contention again. He's only one point behind Wolders, but with three events left and 38 points scored so far, it's the man from Iceland still in a commanding lead. Well, these blocks were hewn from the ice on the frozen lake where we've just seen the sleigh push. And what happens now is that the competitors, in pairs, have got to carry these blocks. Each one weighs about 70 kilos, that's about 10 stone. There are eight of these blocks all together. Carry them across and dump them on the flatbed of this lorry. And it's against the clock. In this round, it's the German Rudi Kuster against the Swede Ingvar Gustafsson, who dearly loved to win something in front of his home crowd. Ready? 
Stamina is what this event is all about. Now, these boys must keep momentum going, even though it means battling through the pain barrier. But at least the blocks are all the same shape, and they're reasonably easy to handle if you're a contender for the world's strongest man. If you're not, well, just forget it. Anyway, should they drop one of these ice blocks and smash it, well, they'd have to go back again and pick up another one. The crowd urging Ingvar on, but he looks as though he's tired. I bet he'll never take ice in anything again. And Rudy Kuster on his last block now. He's finishing as he started at a cracking pace. And his time was 56 seconds and no breakages. Leaping ahead now in time, and Gustafsson struggles in with his last block. It will be a slow time, 2 minutes and 44 seconds. Now Arb Wolders on the left versus Sigmarsson on the right. And this promises to be very close because they're both immensely fast and very fit. They've started at a really furious pace. Wolders just ahead. Still almost neck and neck as Wilders reaches his final block. And that is a very first time indeed, with John Paul only just behind. A great performance by both of these great competitors. John Paul, were you surprised to be beaten by Arb in that heat? Uh, you know, I can't be beaten. I'm not a superman. I think uh, Ab Wanders will be the fastest one. Maybe Jeff, he is in his best form now I've ever seen him. And what about your prediction for the, for the final result? Uh, I'm looking forward to do the arm wrestling. I'm looking forward to be broken or broke somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a nice boy. Now it's Capes versus O Ching, the largest against the smallest. And as Jeff starts well, Pius is already in trouble getting to grips with that block. Now, this couldn't be a more uneven battle. Capes, with his strength and his size and experience. Oh, Ching, he's tiny by comparison. He's eight stone lighter, and he's got no experience whatsoever in this kind of contest or in these kind of conditions. By the way, Daniel Poulin and Dave Waddington have already gone. Poulin completed in one minute and six seconds, but Waddington ran into a whole load of trouble and he had to retire. Well, Jeff's going well, but he's slower than Arb and John Paul, and he's been unlucky with this draw. He'd have preferred to have been against one of the faster men who would have pushed him to his limits. Jeff now with his last block, and his time 53.5 seconds. Pius is still struggling. That's it, and what a brave effort from the Kenyan. And as Wilder's turn to come first again, Sigmundson starting to get used to second place, and Jeff Capes, probably the best all-round athlete of the lot, gets another six points. Only two points for Pius Ching, but he deserves much more for sheer guts. What did it feel like uh, when you went uh, back to get that eighth block? Oh, all what I had to do is show everybody that I am a fighter. You see, when you're, when you're on the ring, you've got to keep going. Three quarters to the contest, and Sigmundson maintains the lead he's had from the start. Our Wolders could still beat him, but Jeff Capes needs a miracle now to retain his world title. And the rest of the field, well, they don't stand a chance, but they're enjoying themselves. And for a more traditional test of strength, we move back inside the toy factory for the bench press. Both the competitors and the crowd are very glad to be back in the warm again. And in this event, the strongmen lie on the floor and have to push heavy logs up above their chests. Their arms must lock out. They all look 
record 200 kilos at Sutlej Ching in Kuna, and we join the event at the 210 kilo log with Kuster having just failed. Lying down the log indicates the point of balance, and there are no handles to grip with, just their bare hands. Next to go is John Paul Sigmundson. He's been really looking forward to this event, and his training program as one of America's top powerlifters should stand him in really good stead. Yeah! And that's a good lift from the American. Yeah! Next comes Jeff Cates. still searching for an event in which he can shine. Wolders and Sigmundson looking on intently because they all know there's a high injury risk in this event because of the lack of a grip on those logs. Nope, the log rolls forward, but he's trying again. his left wrist. John Paul looks anxious. Is he still going to go on? It looks like it. No, no, that's it. He's not going to risk any further damage to his wrist. At the same way, John Paul signals. And that Swedish log is certainly getting an awful lot of Icelandic stick. Let's roll forward. He's lining up again. But that's it. Wisely, John Paul's not risking any injury that could put him out of the contest. But it could be extra points for Jeff because Sir John Paul has to be content to share third place with Wolder. Now Dave Waddington, also at 220 kilos, has just him and Jeff left. going into the unknown now for him. He's never before pressed this sort of weight. Just over 500 pounds there. This really is warming up. Come on! 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 Come on!
technique and the strength to stay with Waddington. He's got to push up very nearly a quarter of a ton. Waddington shouting encouragement. No, Jeff can be it was a fantastic performance to beat Wogers and Sigmundsen, Kusta and Gustafsson, all of them world-class lifters. But it's victory at last for Dave Waddington, the powerlifter from Sandusky, Ohio. So how hard did he find this event? About 10 days ago, I did 585 for swim. I've done over 600 pounds, so I was probably the best bencher here, and I'm sure I could have fought, probably done 100 more pounds. They were, it seemed like they were getting easier. I was concentrating more, and the push was extremely, you know, easy, because I was... Plus, the uh, reason I spit in my hands is to stick a little. You know, the resin and that. I bet you wish this so event had just been... One uh... event to go, this is the position. Sigmundsen from Iceland still on top, five points ahead of Arb Wolders. But Jeff Capes never gives up, and he's really threatening the Dutchman's yeah. second place. Well, behind the scenes, you're one of the best statisticians, statisticians in the business. Yeah. Um, uh, how do you rate <coughs> your chances now of retaining the title? Well, although, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good with figures, I've made a couple of mistakes. And the first mistake was losing the, the lorry pull. And um, that was very important, and it was a very important loss in terms of position. I lost two points. At this stage of the competition, I'm now two points behind Ab Walders. I don't think we can catch John Paul. But um, I needed those two points. And, um, you know, but there again, we got uh, another event to go, one more event. And um, anything else can, can go wrong. It could go wrong for me, but it, I hope... You know, not really. It would go wrong for him. And now we come to the final events of this World Championship, and for the first time we've got man-to-man -man combat between eight of the greatest strongmen on Earth. And they're using this strange piece of uh, apparatus for the test. It's a test that many of us lesser men may have tried from time to time in our lives, but not to this level. So stand by for some real excitement with the arm wrestling. And although he hasn't done well in the competition, the former Canadian arm wrestling champion Daniel Poulin must be highly fancied in this event as Kuster and Gustafsson take up their positions. Take the strike. Go! <laughs> The 32-year-old French-Canadian from Saint-Simon, Quebec, is an arm wrestling champion, so Wolders is really up against a lot of experience. Cups. 
coach there desperately shouting encouragement. And the ref warns Al about keeping his wrist in the correct position. Sorry, you're disqualified for failing to get your wrist back within the five seconds. And the ref stops it. There are very strict rules in this event. So Daniel Pula is the winner. And so to the second semi-final, the showdown between Jeff Capes, the reigning title holder, and the heir apparent John Paul Sigmundson. A man-to-man -man battle of the giants. Is that elbow on the top? Over no. there. Just a shadow. Over there. Hang on, let's sort the top out. Yeah, You're yeah, very close to the end. And the ref there double checking their positions. Oh, you no, push it with fingers, right? No, I must see one. I must see one. Push it with fingers. Jeff, not happy with the way the referee was adjusting the grip there, but these are tense moments for the Englishman. The rules are very strict. That's better. Wait for the go, yeah. both of you. Right. Take the strain. Go! That seems good for Jeff. But just look at that power, and Jeff's hurt. The king has lost his crown! The king has lost his crown, Royals John Ford, in his moment of victory. But Jeff gave a shout of absolute agony at the end of the battle. What exactly happened? Come on! I heard the muscle tear in the forearm. Literally, just, you know, you can hear it. Like a dull tear. But, uh, you know, I felt he was turning the floor. Never mind, I couldn't hold him anyway. So it's Daniel Puna versus John Paul Sigmundson for the final. You, you and I take a match. No, no, I'm he gives up. You win. But now it seems that John Paul is also injured and he's conceding his event to Daniel Puna. Okay. So you are the winner. <laughs> So even Sigmundson is feeling the pain after two days of hard competition. This means that Daniel Pula gets maximum points. But yet another second place for John Paul was more than enough to make him the new title holder. John Paul, congratulations on being the world's strongest man. Thank you. How do you feel at this moment? Uh, I am, like we say in Iceland, I am in seventh heaven. It's always been an ambition of yours? To be the world's strongest man. Yes, since I was about five years old. I said to my brother, one day I'm going to be the world's strongest man. But of course he made a laugh of me. He didn't believe you? No. He'll have to believe it now. Yes. So the final scoreboard tells the story. Jeff Capes, the old campaigner, beaten at last by the power of Dutchman Arb Wolders and by the superb John Paul Sigmundson, who never finished any event lower than third. The celebrations are already underway as Mr. Louis Hogevain, the managing director of International Division DAF Trucks, presents the trophy to this important Icelander, John Paul Sigmundsson, the world's strongest man. Thank <laughs> you.